Glenda Johnson, better known as G. Johnson. When I'm not busy, I like tuning in to Elations Radio on Saturday nights with Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow, Jr., where the topic of discussion is making marriage meaningful. It appeals to the saved and the unsaved. It's for couples who are married, couples who are thinking about marriage, and for those who are divorced yet considering remarriage. Now, this discussion, making marriage meaningful, is the most explicit, authentic relationship Talk live here on Elations Radio. So save the date and time on your calendar. We look forward to hearing and seeing from you at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 9 o'clock p.m. Central. So tune in to the broadcast and be blessed. Amen.
Welcome to Making Marriage Meaningful. This is your host, Apostle Irvin Whitlow. Well, the Lord bless you, the Lord bless you, the Lord bless you. We thank God for you and the opportunity to be here tonight. This is Making Marriage Meaningful, and I am your host, Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow, Jr., I am so elated to be here with you. I really believe that we have a great podcast lined up for you tonight, and we are in expectation that some great things are going to be said that's going to be helpful. Let me put this first disclaimer out there. I am not a relationship expert. Let me repeat. I am not a relationship expert. I just share things based upon what the Lord has given to me over the past 25-plus years. Okay, Um, and I pray that something that I share with you will help you. Secondarily, this disclaimer is also to know that this conversation tonight is going to be real. It's going to be raw, but it's going to be relevant. I really believe that that's what's going to help you in what decisions you're making concerning your marriage. If you're divorced and you're considering remarriage, or if you're in the process of preparing for marriage. We want to give you some information based upon the word of God and experience that I believe will be a benefit and a blessing to you. So join in. Tell somebody making marriage meaningful is on the air. Now, I do not do all of this by myself. I believe I have some help somewhere out there. I just got to do a roll call and see who's joining me. Let me see if my hairstylist is out there tonight. G. Johnson, are you there? Praise God. I am here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me see. i got two big brothers. I don't know which one to introduce first, the crazy one or the thought-provoking one. Let's see. Well, you'll figure them out as you hear them. Let's see. I've got uh, Bishop Designate Ernest E. Richard, all the way from uh, the northern region, the pastor of Power to Stand Outreach Ministry. Uh, Man of God, are you with us tonight? Okay. So I don't hear him. That's unusual. I bet you he went to sleep tonight early. Let's see. Well, let me see if my other brother is here. He's the one who pastors uh, uh, Morning Star Church, volume of the book, Deliverance Ministries International. Uh, glory to God. Uh, let me see. That's Apostle Vincent L. Smith. Are you with us, sir? Okay. I don't have him, and I don't have – well, that's a whole lot of fun. Okay. Well, let's go this way. Let me see if my producer is here. She's got to be here because I'm on the air. Come on, Dr. Kimmy. Say hello to us tonight. Hello. This is a grateful day, and I'm just thankful to be on the air with my sister. And we could double see him again because last week they were bad. They were really bad. We're going to get them this year. So you want to double see? <laughs> To double team me. Oh yeah, we're gonna you double team you. God, we're gonna get you back. Yeah. God ain't pleased. I just want you to know God ain't pleased. So if you're thinking about double teaming me, just remember that Thursday coming is Women's Night. All right, just remember that. Okay. <laughs> I love you, my I love you, my brother. You know I love you. So just know that I love being on this podcast, and it's really a blessing. So this is a grateful day, a really a grateful day. Okay, I'm just putting it out there. Amen. But we're excited tonight that you are here, um, and we're excited. I'm just, just I'm just surprised that both Apostle Smith and Bishop Designate Richard aren't here. That's unusual. I'm supposing that they done had this long, long day. They done fell asleep and forgot something. I don't know. But we are here. You know how they Jesus do. They come on later. They... So. Yeah, well, I'm going to leave that right there. You know, I'm going to leave that right there. So here's what I want to do. I want to get to praying, 
and I want to get back to talking about this thing that we've been talking about for a few weeks now. So, uh, Sister G. Johnson, why don't you lead us in prayer tonight? You're always quiet. Let's get you to pray. Okay. Amen. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another day to do uh, what you have called us to do. We thank you for allowing us to come together once more and again on this glorious evening to share and profess your word among the body of Christ. Father, uh, Father God, we give you all the honor, the glory, and all the praise because you are worthy to be praised. Father, we ask that you will open up hearts to receive your word this evening. We pray that it will change lives. Uh, like never before, we ask that you will strengthen each and every one of us as given the word on tonight. Let us decrease so that you will in, you may increase in our lives as we speak this word on tonight. So whether our listeners are tuned in by radio, telephone, social media, we pray that this word will change and move mountains in their lives. Lord, we lose unclean spirits that try to come in on this broadcast tonight. We rebuke it right now in Jesus' name. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And, Father, Holy Spirit, open up, open up our eyes, our hearts, and our spirits so that we may receive what thus says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, let us read the scripture to you tonight, and we will go from there. Genesis chapter 2. Uh, verse 18 through 25, it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make and help me for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to the, every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. The Lord God called a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. The two shall be one flesh. And they were both naked. The man and his wife and were not ashamed. We've been talking about matching God's meaning for almost a year now because we wanted to structure this marital relationship. And we did it very through a relationship chair. That's what the Lord allowed us to do. We dealt with the foundation being commitment. We dealt with the four legs of the chair, which is friendship, fellowship, uh, family, and finances. We dealt with the seat called faith. We dealt with the back called prayer. And for the past few weeks, we've been talking about where to place that relationship chair, and we determined we would place that chair in the room of forgiveness. That's what we determined we would do, and that's what we have done. Okay? Okay. Uh, So uh, this is going to be very important that we understand this, that we do not miss this because of what the Lord really wants us to get and understand. You must put this relationship chair in a room of forgiveness so that there will be room for forgiveness. That is something that is lacking for a lot of people. That is what is lacking for a number of people, and that has become an issue because there is no forgiveness in the lives of many people. Uh, And so these things are very important and crucial if we want to see a healthy, happy marriage. There has to be room for forgiveness. So here's something that we discovered about forgiveness. We discovered that uh, that that in no matter who, what couple it is, whether they've been married for just a few months or five years, or even if they've been uh, observing their 50th wedding anniversary, 
they will have to offer or accept forgiveness from each other at some point along the way. Why? Because your spouse is human. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. They are human. Listen to me. They are human. So humans have different personalities, different life experiences, different goals and aspirations. So you must understand that they are going to go through something that's going to cause them to mess up. We discussed a couple of things. One, we discussed what it means to forgive or what forgiveness means. We understand that forgiveness means to pardon, to excuse. It is a dismissal or to release, to wipe the slate clean. It is freeing self from the weight of anger. We also discovered that forgiveness is the suspension of a just sentence. We discovered that forgiveness is a gift from God. Watch this. Watch this. Psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person who has harmed you, regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. These are things that we discovered about forgiveness and what it means, and we determined that uh, marriage is three parts love and seven parts forgiveness, meaning that you will have to forgive a whole lot more than you love. Oh, boy. There's a lot of people who may struggle with that right now, but you will have to forgive. Uh, You will have to forgive a whole lot more than you love. Now, watch this. We discovered this, that that that, that uh, your forgiveness should be unlimited. We use the scripture in Matthew 18, 21 and 22, when Peter asks Jesus, how often shall I forgive my brother? Shall it be seven times? Jesus says, not until seven times, but until 70 times seven. That's what he says, until 70 times seven, which means that there should be unlimited forgiveness in your marriage, unlimited forgiveness. Please understand that you should have unlimited forgiveness. There should not be a limitation on on somebody because they've messed up. Think of how many times you messed up, how many times you've done something wrong, how many times you messed you you messed over uh, with your spouse, making a stupid decision, doing something you shouldn't have done. Well, God says that you should have unlimited forgiveness in your heart, uh, for unlimited forgiveness. Now, here's what we discovered, because. Uh, last week, uh, Lady G. Johnson began to ask the question, if a person is doing wrong every week, when does it become abuse? And what we discovered is that though it may be abuse, we are still required to forgive. Because, listen, some people do things because they know they can. Some people mm-hmm. do things because they know you don't get there. It is, is it mm-hmm. right? No, it's not right. But it is the reality of what people do. It is the reality of what people do. They seek to get over on people. But here's what the Lord says. Your job is to forgive regardless of what they do. Because at the end of the day, God is not going to hold you accountable for what uh, they did to you, he's going to hold you accountable for how you responded to them. Now, here's what we determined last week. Forgiveness, watch this, forgiveness runs out at your boundaries. 
and your mm-hmm. boundaries run out when your love runs out. Let me say that again because mm-hmm. somebody might be taking notes. Somebody might be taking notes. Let me say it again. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness runs out at your boundaries. Your boundaries is your limit. Remember that. Your boundaries is your limit. So forgiveness runs out at your boundaries, and your boundaries run out when your love runs out. Now, the Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear, for fear has torment. That word torment literally means boundary. Uh So when you have that, when you have that torment, your love has not been perfected. So here's what the Lord wants you to understand, that when your love hasn't been perfected, that it gives you a boundary and you're afraid to go beyond that boundary because you've never been beyond that point before. And since you've never been beyond that point before, there is, a, uh, there is the, the notion that if I go beyond this point, I'm setting myself up for something bad to happen. But God says, I want you to forgive without limitation. How do I mm-hmm. forgive without limitation? when I have a boundary? How do I forgive Mm. without limitation when my love is saying I cannot take no more? Because we have looked at what love means. Watch, watch this, because I don't want nobody to miss this. I want everybody to get this in their sanctified soul. Watch this, because when you look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, the the 13th chapter, that's what I'm looking for, Here's what it says. It says, watch this, charity suffers long. That word charity is love. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. It, charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So the question is, how do we deal with this thing when uh, when when love is supposed to have all of this leeway? When mm. love is supposed to have all this leeway. How do we deal with these things? Because that becomes the actual challenge when you're supposed to have unlimited love. But you, how can you have unlimited love when you have run out of love because of all that you have endured? There are some tricky things going on here. And so you're like, okay, God, you want me to have unlimited forgiveness, but you know I don't have unlimited love. Come on, let's talk mm. about that. Right. How do you have unlimited forgiveness when you don't have unlimited love? Oh, wow. Uh, well, I'm I'm just gonna say uh, unlimited. You did you unlimited love? You're supposed to have unlimited love, correct? Right. Hello. Okay. You're supposed yeah. to you have, have unlimited, unlimited love and unlimited love. forgiveness, correct? Okay. What's now, uh, you, you know, have unlimited said, forgiveness. That, how do you, you have me? unlimited forgiveness if you don't have unlimited love? Oh, how do you have unlimited? Well, you can forgive a person. Uh, you can forgive a person, uh, but if they keep, you know, th- if they keep doing it, then the boundaries start to set in. Uh, and you can even, you know, still love that person, but the love may fall into to another type of love because, you know, we have all these different types of love. So uh, when you feel uh, like you're being uh, used or you're being, um, uh, uh, how should I say, someone's playing you because they know that, you know, you're going to forgive them no matter what, then it, it's something that you have to really bring to the table and say, hey, I love you and I forgive you, but if you keep doing uh, doing this and going out and doing all these different things, now I believe you're putting our uh, relationship at risk, you know, uh, whether you're doing something sexual or whatever the case may be, now you're putting the relationship at risk. So now I have to go and I I can forgive you, but I have to also use my head too, because if you're going out uh, and let's just put the scenario of of sexually uh, using your body all these times, and then you're coming back, and we're supposed to have this loving relationship, and we're just 
all these things are going on. So uh, I believe that it's 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 a boundary, whereas you have to protect yourself because if this person is taking advantage of your love, of your uh, forgiveness, then um, then I think that there's something that you should bring to to God and, and, and ask him how should you handle a situation. You know, most people uh, will handle it by saying, hey, well, we need to get a divorce. Because if you're, if you're constantly doing this week after week and you can't stop, you know, and I'm, keeping, I'm forgiving you over and over, but, you know, it's just a continuous thing, then, I mean, how stupid am I to keep accepting that? Hmm. Dr. Timmy? I agree because when when you're married, um, I really believe that forgiveness is, like you just said, it's part of the package. Um, I don't know any perfect marriages. People go through the ups and the downs, but I really believe when you go through the trials and the tribulations, it brings you actually closer. I really do. And without any pain, remember that old saying by um, Betty, I forget her name, she was the singer, No Pain, No Gain. I really believe truly in that song. No pain, no gain. How can you prosper in your marriage if you never go through anything? That's life. I mean, how can we go through something in life if we don't have the wisdom of God, because God says that when you become a disciple of his, the world's going to hate you. So marriage is, you know, going to be challenging. But what's so beautiful about marriage is that when people, when they are um, on the same alignment and they have a disagreement, they can both win and learn from each other. It's not really a bad thing when you have a disagreement. It shows you, like, your compassion. It shows, like, your love towards each other, even throughout the differences. Because at the end of the day, we all are different people. And I really believe conflict helps you build a stronger relationship. Yeah. Well, there, there's so much in this that I, I really want to dig into this. Because I'm thinking, your forgiveness runs out. Because your boundaries, you're at your boundaries. So when you're at the end of your boundaries, your boundaries have run out. Your love has run out. But yet, love does all this stuff. So my question is, does love know what abuse is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's a good question. Does love know what abuse is? Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Yes, love does. Love does know what abuse is. Mm -hmm. When you look at Calvary, when you look at the night that Jesus was betrayed, going through a 17-point kangaroo system, (laughs) they did all that they did with, that was pure abuse, and that was all before he ever got to the cross. But yet, but yet Jesus prayed that the Father would forgive them. Now, he did. here's my question. He knew ahead of time. Go ahead. Jesus, Jesus well, now here's a question. Jesus prayed that the Father would forgive them because they didn't know what they were doing. So, now that was his prayer. Now, the question is, did Jesus forgive them? Of course. <laughs> of course, of course he did. <laughs> he did? Yes, he did. Lord Jesus, I hear you. Yeah, okay. So he's saying, well, he's said, saying, yes, Jesus did forgive him. That's why he continued with the death process. Of course he had to. I mean, if he goes to the cross as a sacrifice with an attitude, of course, sacrifice would have been dead. <laughs> Amen. If he goes so, to the cross with saying, a vendetta, and I'm saying if he goes to the cross with a vendetta, 
then the sacrifice that he puts up becomes illegal. If not, it is no longer relevant. Love drove him okay. to give his life. Ain't no way in the world you can go and sacrifice yourself okay. and ask for forgiveness and <clears throat> not grant it. He asked not just for himself. He prayed for them in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then he prayed for them. He prayed to the Father for them while he was on the cross. Two different times he prayed. Amen. Amen. So, 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 there should never be a time that your love doesn't have the ability to forgive. Look, look at this again. This is what, this is the four things that you must understand uh, that love does. Well, five things. It bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, but it never fails. Part of that, charity never fails, means that it never stops fighting. So if love never stops fighting, then there should always be an opportunity and room for forgiveness, even if you are at your boundary. Because the love of God and the forgiveness he offers does not, uh, is not contingent upon your boundaries. Let me say that again. The love of God and the forgiveness that God offers is not contingent upon your boundaries. That's why you must have unlimited forgiveness. We were talking, one of the things we were talking about last week, is about how long you should wait to forgive. How long? Now, some someone is saying that uh, you should give a little bit of time for the ability to cool off. But, you know, I'm thinking, some people get in such a rage that they don't have the opportunity to come off. Uh, to cool off because why? Some people unfortunately have a heart attack or a stroke and that's it. Wow. <laughs> and everything changes. Listen to me. Death changes everything. Mm. So now you're in a place where there's unforgiveness, there's death, and it's something that could have been solved. The other person said, that the Bible says you don't let the sun go down upon your wrath, meaning that you should forgive before you go to sleep. So, somebody, let's revisit that. When is the right time, or how long should one wait to forgive? Immediately. I would say Anybody? right away. And right away. You should mm -hmm. forgive immediately. Okay, so there should be no time to hold anything for it to build up and become more than what it is. So then what is wrong with people that they need a little bit of time to get themselves together? They're all in their feelings. That's what's wrong with them, and that is just flesh on parade. End of story. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. When you're Amen. In your feelings, I believe that too. Mm -hmm. So, they got a, venge, so, so, a spirit so. of vengeance, and they have to calm and quell that spirit of vengeance, get in their spiritually right mind, not in what they call their right mind, because if they listen to their carnal mind, they're going to do a lot of dumb stuff, say a lot of stupid things, call a lot of irrelevant people, send a lot of excess nonsense out there and build a case for why they shouldn't forgive, and then they're going to decide to forgive, but it's too late because they got the news that you've been talking about them. So here they come. I heard you've been talking about me. Yeah, well, it's all true, and here we go. Now we got the Hatfields and McCoys about to break out. All you had to do was just forgive. Mm. All you had to do was just mm -hmm. forgive. Okay. Absolutely. I want I want to I want to twist this a little bit. Lying and deception in marriage. How do you handle forgiveness when you are lied to and deceived? Because 
this is an issue for a lot of people because it is let it is impossible to love somebody without trusting them. It is impossible mm-hmm. to love somebody without trusting them. So now when someone lies to you or deceives you, how do you forgive in such a case? Talk to me, ladies. Because y'all have a hard time when y'all have been deceived uh-huh. and lied to. Well, I, you know, I would still, I would forgive the person, but, you know, as far as to allow them to keep lying to me, I would do that. Say that again, you would forgive a person, but what? I, I would forgive them because they know not what they do. But anyway, I would, I would forgive them, you know, because, because you know, they, they are a straight out liar, you know, and, um, um, but that doesn't mean that I would uh, keep accepting their lies, but, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm in a position to forgive them, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to believe them over and over and over as far as what they're saying. Okay. So you're not going to, you're going to forgive them, but you're not going to forget is what you're saying. Well, no, it's just that I will forgive them, but I, I'm not going to be naive to, um, you know, to allow them to, to keep, you know, to um, think that I'm going to believe everything that they say and, you know, and all this other kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'll, I'll forgive them, but, again, I'm not going to uh, allow them to uh, play me for a fool either, you know, so. Okay. But this is important because this is a challenge for a lot of people. A lot of people have mm-hmm. been lied to mm-hmm. in their marriage. In their Now they're struggling to deal with their mate. Because they were lied to, they were deceived. But mm-hmm. yet now they did this. How do you do it? Come on, Doctor Kimmy, talk to me now. How do you do it? You have to do it by the strength of the Lord. I'm going to be honest. I can't forgive the way I need to forgive without His strength, and He gives you the love. He he gives you the strength and love to do it because if I have to forgive you, I'm gonna be honest. I'll have a carnality spirit, but because we are saved by the blood of Jesus and He gives us the opportunity to um, work in His spirit because we need His spirit on a daily basis. You have to be led by the spirit of the Lord. Because if I had to forgive you, if I'm telling you, if I had to do it on my might, I won't do it. <laughs> There's so many people I, I I have to forgive. Because if I don't forgive, my father won't forgive me. So I'm just being real. I'm just being 100. I I I'm just being 100. So so you said if you don't do it, the father won't forgive you. So my question exactly. now becomes is. The- is the only reason you forgive so that the Father would forgive you? No, I do it because, you know, um, as you grow in grace and you grow in mercy, you see how the Father has forgiven you. So it's, it becomes like second nature because you, you feel so remorseful for the things that Jesus has done for us. And when you see the compassion that he has for you, it's it's really in your spirit because it becomes like you become a spiritual being in knowing that, you know, we all fall. We all have our good days and bad days. So, yeah, it does help to – it does help. It does start with God. Everything starts with God. But he gives us the direction to do things. And, yes, I was led by his direction. When he sent his only begotten son so that we can have a relationship with him. So everything begins with God. Yeah, absolutely. But it should also be part of your lifestyle. Okay, so it should be, so forgiveness should be a part of your lifestyle. Yes. So, So what you're saying then is that as a believer, you should grow into such a character that forgiveness is not a challenge 
for you. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, because when you're led by the Spirit, uh, the Spirit will be like, you remember what you did? Huh? And you'll be like, forget. I'm sorry, Father. Absolutely. The Spirit will bring rem- remembrance upon you if you don't forgive. I'm telling you, it works. There are times I'll be like, oh, I'm still doing this, God. And he'll say, remember how you work? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's amazing what God would do in the midst of uh, activity. Yeah. So let me ask this question. I want to put this out there. Just because someone asks you to forgive them, does that necessarily mean that they are sorry? No. Hmm. Some people just Hmm. talk. Some people talk Uh a good game. You're saying no? You have to see the deeds. Nope. Some people talk. You got to look at their deeds, their actions. I believe so. So so when they're asking for forgiveness and you know they're not sorry, does that mean that you are not genuine when you forgive them or will you still be genuine in forgiving them, even though you know that they are not truly sorry? Yes, you still must forgive them because remember the first thing that Jesus did, uh, the first thing was forgive them for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. He knew that they weren't going to forgive him or they weren't, you know, being compassionate towards him, but he had it in his, I just love that. I just love that was the first thing he said. Um, He just has so much love for us. It's just that the pain, the pain was not strong enough to overbear the love that he had or had for us. The pain that he was going through with the physical pain and the disappointment pain, it didn't overbear his love for us because, you know, we, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I did, you know, kill Jesus at the cross. It may not have been when I was at Calvary, but with my lifestyle in the early times in my life, you know, um, (laughs) yeah, I was, I was burying him too, putting him to the Calvary. Yeah. So, when I think about that, it gives me a humbling spirit in knowing that, you know, this too shall pass. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, now, here, let's let's go this route. How do you forgive the person who lies to you? You know they lied. <laughs> Same way you How do the one you snuck up in. The same way. There's no difference. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. It's, it's, that's there's no good. difference. See, we got to stop trying to separate sins, figure out what's a big sin and what's a little sin. Sin is sin. Regardless of its size, shape, creed, or color, sin is flat out sin. And in God's eyesight and in his nostrils, it stinks. And you will miss heaven if you're committing sin and you die and leave here without getting forgiveness. So if you're not willing to forgive, your Father in heaven is not going to forgive you. Just know that. End of story. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, then what about what about the person who broke their promise? How do you forgive them? They broke well, their promise. I, I, I promise I will never hit you. I promise I'll never well, lie to you. I promise well, I'll never cheat yeah. you. I promise I'll never mistreat you. I promise I won't well, do you wrong. But they break that promise. How do you forgive them? Here's where you find out what you really Mm -hmm. are, where you really are. Mm -hmm. To what degree Mm -hmm. have you matured? That's where you find out. Because trust me, if the tasks were easy, if the tests were easy, it would be no problem. But the task nor the test (laughs) is ever going to be easy. Let's stop and think for 35 seconds. I know you're asking questions to spark conversation, but whoever's listening, understand something. You think of all the dirt and all the foolishness that you did, how many dirty thoughts you had against people, how many women you've done wrong, how many men you've done wrong, how many people you stole from, how many people you manipulated. You think about all that. God forgave you for every ounce of that. So who are you that you cannot forgive this individual because of this trespass against you? Stop praying and asking for God's forgiveness if you, first of all, are not willing to forgive. You might as well just shut up, 
until you take care of your business. Don't even bother going to the altar because it's a waste of time. You go to the altar with issues on your mind, with, 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 with crazy stuff. You don't want to forgive this one because they cheated on you. You don't want to forgive this because they lied on you. You don't want to forgive this one because they hit you or because they did everything they said they wouldn't do. Forgive. You don't have to stay in that madness. Just move on. Well, let's, let's look, you know, we're always, like talking about, we're always talking about movies. We're always talking about movies. Mm-hmm. So we look at the best man. We look at the mm-hmm. best man. Morris Chester, mm-hmm. O.A. Diggs, uh, and Terrence uh, mm-hmm. Howard, I believe. All right. So yep. let's consider this. Let's consider this. Uh, Tay Diggs had a relationship with, with Morris Chester. Fiance, uh-huh. long time old. Now, Morris Chestnut is obsessed with being a football player. He claims he's a Christian in this mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. He claims that his fiance had never stepped out on him. Mm-hmm. But the moment he that she did. He's mad at his best friend. And not only is he mad at his best friend, he beats him half to death. Mm-hmm. About to throw him from, I don't know, 30, 40 stories up in a hotel, mm-hmm. pit house. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now watch this. He's doing all of this, and he talks said he will fall off the wedding. Now, when uh, his best friend, Tay Diggs, said, hey, you promised that if she ever did you wrong or stepped out on that you would forgive her, yet he's willing to throw the marriage away. He's supposed to be a believer. Now, there are people who are thinking he's justified in being angry and upset with her, and he's justified in wanting to call the marriage off. I want to know, do you think that he was justified with being upset, though it happened some time ago, considering all the dirt he had done? No, it was not justified. Because remember, in his dog-like nature, he was out hustling and jocking every chick he can get his penis into while he was dating her. So trust me, he ain't, he ain't no brand new pair of shoes. He has no brand new pair of shoes. Too many people want to look squeaky, kink, squeaky clean in the middle of turmoil of that caliber. She needed comforting, and he was there. Harper was there, and he comforted her. But they had always had a thing for each other. Go ahead. And uh, I was just going to say, and and he was her first. (laughs) That's a sad thing. (laughs) Yeah. Well, she Mm -hmm. was. He was. And see, see, the thing about it is whether he was the first, the last, or the middle, the truth Mm -hmm. of the matter is had had, uh, uh, he been faithful, it would have been no problem. Yeah. Exactly. But he was his his lack of faithfulness created a problem. Getting mad at something that happened umpteen years ago. Get over it. That's all I'm saying. Get over it. That's a big problem. Not just black people. People of all races, creed, and color. When something, I'm gonna say it to you like this. And the scripture says, I believe it's in Galatians six. And I may be wrong on the scripture. No, I'm right. Galatians six and ten. It says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth. That's really so real. Mm-hmm. He got back what he put out. He got back what he put out. Latasha so says well, we must forgive people even if they never ask for forgiveness. But we must forgive, get it right, or do the right thing according to God's mm-hmm. word. It's mm-hmm. a struggle to forgive, and we must go to God to help us forgive. That is so true. Right. If we're finding a struggle to forgive, then we need to go to God and say, God, get me beyond this struggle so I can forgive. Because the one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to miss you because I couldn't forgive or because I didn't forgive. Which is what he did. Forgiveness should not be a struggle. Oh, boy. 
Let me say it again. That's what, forgiveness would not be a struggle. That's what he right. did. That's it. All right. Now watch this. Watch this. Now uh, uh, Betty Hart says that forgiveness starts within yourself, and you have to forgive so you can move on in life. Amen. I agree. That's you have to forgive so you can move on in life. If you're not willing to forgive, then you're not willing to move forward. You want to stay stuck right where you are. Watch I this can say now. that because I want to share this. With you. Sorry. No, I was just going to say I remember um, last week uh, I was just doing a lot of the listening. Uh, Bishop uh, overseer. Um, prophet, um, he's in everything. Um, he said something else as well. He said, "If you cannot forgive, you cannot have. It's first of all, you cannot have a life or a, a prosperous life because you are in, living in the past." It was very profound. Forgiveness robs you of your joy. Forgiveness yeah. allows you to, to become very bitter. Forgive unforgiveness. Yeah. I'm sorry. Unforgiveness allows you to. Hate people for no reason. No. Mm-hmm. Hatred said, is not of said, God. He said, he said, unforgiveness will make you murder yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it was. It that's, was so good. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, that was good. Unforgiveness will make you murder yourself. That was a very good point. Very good point. Now, watch this. Watch this. I'm going to share something with you. You have to forgive your spouse. Because later, you're going to want to be forgiven. Let me say it again. You're going to have to forgive your spouse because later, you are going to want to be forgiven. Uh, Bishop Desmond said something, but, and I thought he was going elsewhere. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and 1, brethren, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, ye who are spiritual, Restore unto him in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Here's the thing. We often want to be forgiven, but we don't want to forgive. Wait a minute. How is it that you want to be forgiven, but you don't want to forgive? Huh? You, you, because when you mess up, you want everybody to get over it real quick. But when somebody messes up with you, you want to hold on to it forever. Mm-hmm. 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 You, if you, you do not forgive, <laughs> you're mm-hmm. going to need to be forgiven. So how can you expect something you're not willing to give? Exactly. And let me let me make this clear. I want to go. Oh boy, I'm, I'm gonna probably get in some trouble, but but let me help you here. The truth shall shall say. You may not stay <laughs> with your mate. Watch this. You may not stay with your mate because they did something that you found to be unforgivable. And you might get with somebody else. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to do something, and they're going to find it unforgivable. Why? Because whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. I want to tell you karma is real. Let me say I again. Just said that, Karma, that's what I I'm saying. That. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, 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 think about it. if you, so, so you can leave. You can be in this marriage. You can, you can completely dissolve this marriage and wait a few years and get married to somebody else, and then you do something they find unforgivable. Guess what? They gonna leave you. Why? Because you couldn't forgive someone from then who you were with. Before. Lord Jesus, I don't, I don't mess up. Come on oh, now. No, this is they don't want to because we talking right. about that. That's all right. They're gonna have to but just face you, the truth. But if you Come don't on. forgive, you, to... you cannot forgive it. Can I? Amen. I just want to say this. I think this is so necessary. There is power in forgiveness. Yes, there is. Wait a minute. We say power in the name of Jesus, but I come to submit to you, ma'am, sir, there is power in forgiveness. 
power, there's power in forgiveness because forgiveness determines if you will have happiness or not. Forgiveness Amen. determines if you will have a future or not. Lord Jesus, help us, help us, help us. Because we want to hold on to something so bad. We want to hold on to something so bad. But you have to forgive your spouse because later you're going to need to be forgiven. So here's what we have to consider. And this goes back to what G. Johnson was talking about. Consider what you will do when that same problem persists. Okay, so you lied to me once. You asked me to forgive you. You lied to me again. You asked me to forgive you. You lied to me again. You asked me to forgive you. Huh? So... At what point are you going to be serious about me forgiving you that you're going to make a change? You're going to make an adjustment. Because this is what people do. They'll say, give me another chance and I'll do better. Um, And then you hear these words, you said that the last time. So the person Mm. who says that, Are they not harboring unforgiveness? You said that the last time. Mm -hmm. Is that not? Mm. Oh, you're asking the question. Is (laughs) Is that unforgiveness? Lord Jesus, did I get in trouble here? No, you didn't. People have to realize forgiveness comes with a price. Yeah. It cost Amen. Jesus his life to forgive. Who are you? Amen. It cost Jesus mm. his 39 lashes on his back, those crown of thorns on his head, that that raggedy, tattered robe, excuse me, tattered robe that they put on him. It cost him humiliation. It cost him hurt. It cost people spitting on him. It cost him his visage being marred than, more than any man's. It cost him nails in his hands and nails in his feet. It cost him being laid down on the ground, nailed to a cross, dumped in a hole, and suspended between heaven and earth for all the world to see. And in the midst of all that, he had forgiven long before he got to that particular point because he knew that was his ultimate end, physically speaking. And so you can't forgive because somebody... Did you wrong? You can't forgive because somebody cheated on you. You can't forgive. And I mean, listen, if they've done it a number of times, I respect you if you don't want to go back to them. Say, listen, I'm going to forgive you and I'm going to forget it, but we cannot stay together. It doesn't mean I don't forgive you. It's just that you're not going to cheat on me anymore because obviously you are not going to be faithful. You've done this five times already. I gave you five times. That's the number of grace. The grace has just run out. I will see you. Wouldn't want to be you. And I hope the next woman you meet is better or try to be better than I was. People have to take that approach. I'm trying to say you forgive until there's nothing left in you to forgive. And then you continue to forgive because love covers a multitude of sins, regardless of what they may do. There are no big sins, no little sins. Sin is. Simple as that. Sin is. It's all about you getting into heaven. So you said that love covers a multitude of sins. So love Mm -hmm. covers a multitude of sins. Then why is it still an issue when people should be forgiven? Because they haven't forgiven. Pretty simple. They have not forgiven. They have not not forgiven. Nope. Mm. They forgave just for just for that moment. They forgave. For For that that moment. moment. But they forgave. But but it didn't mean anything. It didn't mean anything. See, because here's the biggest problem and we have to revisit it. People say, (laughs) I'll forgive you. But I won't forget. And we can right. tell that a person didn't forget because they continue to bring it up. I remember yep. when. They'll when. do that. So could, it be, so could it be that the reality is that people struggle to forgive because 
people don't want to release their hurt. Mm-hmm. Somebody's hurting right now because mm-hmm. he lied. Somebody's mm-hmm. hurting because somebody's hurting Amen. because yes. of something that happened between the stepfather and the daughter. Yep. Wow. Somebody's Tell hurting for something that happened with the with the brother in law and the son. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. Good God. So this because watch this. Watch this. Because forgiveness in marriage really will impact the entire family. It will. Did you hear what I said? Forgiveness yes, did. in marriage will impact the entire family. So so if if I don't forgive you, word gets out about what has happened. Now he's mad, she's mad, nobody wants to come together. Now Thanksgiving is ruined. Now Christmas is ruined. Now we can't get together for no birthdays or nothing because what? No forgiveness. This is something that's going on with families right this soon. Because of unforgiveness. Because of unforgiveness. People not willing. But it was a it was a continuous problem. It was a continuous problem. So that leads me to say that not only must forgiveness be offered but we also need to offer help because if you're not willing to offer help, then this is going to be a problem that will persist more. Watch, I want to share a little story with you. I want to share a little story with you about a charismatic Catholic church. This young man went to this charismatic, he went to mass. When he would go to mass, he would go to confession, and he would pray. No, not confession. He would go to the altar. He would kneel, and he would pray. And he would say, Lord, take this web out of my life. I don't want it. I don't need it. He would boohoo. He would cry. When he felt a release, he would get up and walk away. The very next week during Mass, he would go to the altar, and he would pray. Lord, take this web out of my life. I don't want it. I don't need it. And he would cry. And he would snot. And he would slobber. And when he felt that he'd been released, he would get up and go his way. He did this for several weeks. And the priest watched him. So this time, when he went, to Mass, and he went to the altar, and he began to pray, and he said, Lord, take this web out of my life. I don't want it. I don't need it. He began to weep and and cry and slobber. When he felt released, he was ready to get up, but this time, the priest held him down with his hands on him and said, Lord, don't just take the web, but take the spider. Because where there is no spider, there can be no web. Let me say this. Uh, My point is that it's one thing to offer forgiveness, but it's another thing to offer help so that this problem does not continue to persist. Boy, that should have been a hand clap right there. I'm trying to tell you, there are things that we ignore because we don't want to deal with the root of it. What is causing this thing to persist? What is causing this to constantly be an issue that there is nothing being done about it? Does this person who is cheating on you, do they have a sexual fetish? Are they are they craving this? Do are are they lacking some attention in this area? Do they not know what it is to be true? What was their upbringing? What are the things that has contributed to this behavior? Yeah. So we want to offer forgiveness, 
but I believe we ought to offer help so that this doesn't continue to be a problem. That's why counseling is not a bad idea. I'm not talking about before you get married. I'm talking about even after you're married. You ought to have counseling because why? Because sometimes you're getting on his nerves and he's getting on your nerves and y'all don't know how to deal with each other and that's why you're struggling to forgive each other. Lord, I wish I had somebody who would help me tonight. Say something to me here. Somebody, talk to me. And then there was silence. No, well, I'm I agree, you're not you know, uh, say counseling. I mean, you're, you said a lot. <laughs> well, that's good. Come on, lady. No altered dictation. I thought Come on, so lady. Okay. Well, basically, what I was about to say is just you said a, a mouthful. I mean, forgiveness is important. Forgiveness is sometimes not about us. Sometimes we have to uh, take our feelings out of the situation, take our logistic, logical thinking out of the situation, and just allow the spirit to move within us. Because at the end of the day, it's all about your walk with the Lord. And um, in marriage, it's key that you continue on that walk in the Lord so he can continue on being that third strand. And if you are in the process of wanting to get married, you have to live a forgiving lifestyle. So when you have a family member or a coworker or a colleague that, you know, did something wrong to you, you have to still live a forgive a forgiving life style that is pleasing to the father. Amen. Yeah. Anyone else? Oh, okay, what I was gonna say in reference to um the counseling, um, yeah, it's 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 okay to do counseling uh, while you're married as well. When you come against, or when you come against those uh, uh, hard times or those uh, times that you you're struggling and you're challenging, it's good to you know go to uh, someone uh, who can counsel with you, whether it's it's the elders of the church or a pastor or a professional or whatever the case may be. Um, And sometimes people don't want to do that. One of the parties don't want to do it because they feel like, hey, it's not, you know, uh, they may feel too high and mighty to do it, or it may feel like nothing's wrong or whatever. But uh, I know that I personally have been through counseling even while marriage. And um, I believe, uh, well, it helped me, I can say, you know, there was things that, I hadn't looked at, and the um, the counsel was a pastor, and uh, he brought some things to light that really uh, helped the situation. Because you know, basically, when we're pointing the fingers at everybody else, he said you need to be looking at yourself. You know, um, but I believe that it it can really help in marriages that are struggling with you know unforgiveness or whatever the case may be. Okay. Amen. Amen. I want to. I want to. I want to jump on this real quick. It, I think it would be beneficial if couples forgave each other on a daily basis from the bottom of their hearts, so that it wouldn't be a challenge later when they messed up. In other words, I think pra- uh, forgiveness should be a daily practice. What do you think about that? I agree because we all fall short daily. It may not be uh, sure something you can see, but, you know, what we think. <laughs> Forgive me. I was we just should, thinking about do. something I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah. No, go anyway. ahead. Say it. Say it. No, you know, there are Put times you want to say something there. that's on your mind. <laughs> say it. <laughs> Don't like... be afraid. <laughs> yes. Say I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to beat you up. Somebody's delivery. <laughs> what we got to stop doing. But what I'm Somebody's saying, but deliverance what I'm is, is probably at stake. Yeah, yeah. So say. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, you know, you feel like I want to hurt you or I have, you know, thought about mm-hmm. cheating on you. I thought about leaving you. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Mm-hmm. I forgive you. No. Sometimes it's good to be real. I mean, 
when you lay your cards out on the table and the whole thing when you keep things bottled in, people don't know what you're feeling. You have to speak uh-huh. it out. You can speak life or death with the power of your tongue. So that's why it's important to mm-hmm. continue on a forgiving lifestyle, even in marriage, every day. All right, now. Oh, Lord. On a daily basis, forgiveness should be practiced. Just like daily. on a daily basis, you tell your spouse, you, I love you, I love you. At the same time, you should say, I forgive you. I know they might sit there and think, okay, what are you forgiving me for? Now, what I'm doing is I'm practicing how to forgive you so that when it's actually time to forgive you, I won't struggle. Listen, here's what La Prasa uh, said. A person had done me wrong in so many areas, but I said to myself, I wasn't going to allow this person to send me hell Send me to hell for having unforgiveness towards them or having bitterness, bitterness, etc. She says, our soul is more important. That's why we must forgive according to God's word. Again, forgiveness must be unlimited. Forgiveness, imagine. A person can only... I, I, excuse the expression. A person can only screw up so bad on a day-to-day basis, but not one person would mess up 490 times in one day. I don't care what the discrepancy is. I don't care what the 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 fault was. You can't mess up. 490 ta- 90 times Amen. in one day with one person. You would have to do that almost every minute. Come on, because there's not 490 hours in a day. So you would have to do something every minute to mess that up. So you're talking about all day. Okay, I, 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 you did this wrong. I'm sorry. Okay, I forgive you. You did that wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I forgive you. Come on. Forgiveness must be unlimited day in, day out. The Bible says you can be angry, but it says sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Watch this. I want to say this, and I'm going to end with this tonight. Do not take forgiveness from your spouse for granted. Yes, Mm -hmm. you are to have Mm -hmm. limited forgiveness, but do not take it for granted. Just like the Bible tells us not to take the grace of God for granted. Oh, boy. What did the Bible say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. If you really love your spouse, you won't take their forgiveness for granted. I just messed up, boy. Don't take forgiveness from your spouse for granted. Come on, let me hear your thoughts on that. Anybody? All right. <laughs> I was trying not to talk, ladies, but you're all forcing me well, to talk on this radio show. Well, uh-huh. not just for your spouse, people that you love. Don't take your wife, don't take your brother, your sister for granted. Uh-huh. Because, right. you know, I'm just, I'm coming to realize, you know, tomorrow's not promised. So why not love on your family today through forgiveness? Nothing is guaranteed tomorrow. I mean, I've lost so many people in 2020, and I'm still, like, at owl, at wow. Like, wow, you never thought that they would get their wings. So it's uh, telling me and keeping me humble and knowing that tomorrow is not promised for me, you know. So it's definitely important to not take people for granted. So if you do have an issue, go to them and, and try to reconcile. If they don't want to reconcile back with you, you have done your deed. 
you can't force someone to uh, forgive you, but you can, you know, um, be known that you're sorry, and then you've done all you can do. Yeah. Mm. Anyone else? Well, this is all I'm going to say about that. Uh, when you take, you know, uh, you shouldn't take them for granted because sometimes you can find yourself by yourself when you um, mm-hmm. constantly take a person for granted and so forth. So that, that's mm-hmm. all I have to say on that. Mm-hmm. Wait, but you, put out, you can find you're yourself, going to get back. yourself when you take somebody for granted. That's big. That's very big that's right there. Big. You can find yourself by yourself when you take somebody for granted. Oh boy, that was good. That was good. Bishop Desiccant? I was hoping you wouldn't call me. It's hard to talk. <laughs> Bottom line is if you ain't willing, to, if you're not willing to change, God ain't willing to change for you. That's good too. I agree. Because it just says, you know, in the uh, standard prayer, forgive me for my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass up, um, on me or against me. So, and that's your daily prayer. So God, in his standard prayer, has given us a standard prayer and forgiveness that's included in, in the standard prayer. So with that being said, you should want to give forgive your spouse on a daily basis because, like you just said, you know, when you practice that on a daily basis, you know, it becomes a routine and you can grow. And it leaves no leakage for the Satan to come in and, you know, be sneaky and try to, um, you know, uh, cause division because he comes to seek whoever he can devour. And if he can see that you have a weakness in your foundation, he would try to see how strong it really is. So when you have a strong uh, forgiveness appetite in your marriage, it is a beautiful love story. Because there is no way someone could be together for 50 years without forgiveness, or 60 years, or 70 years. You had to have forgiveness in that marriage because we are still carnality, we may not be as carnality as we were when we were first born, but we're not 100% spiritual. So, you know, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall. That's the word. Yeah. Hmm. Forgiveness is necessary. Yeah. You can't get around it. You can't avoid it. You can't ignore it. It's necessary. If you want a healthy, happy, long-lasting marriage, you need to learn how to forgive. I want to conclude on this forgiveness in marriage on next week, but I want you to meditate on this, that you can't go far if you don't forgive. You will carry a burden unknown. You will carry a pain unimaginable. Most of all, you will carry a price you cannot pay. Forgiveness is necessary in marriage. I want to thank you tonight for tuning in to Making Marriage Meaningful. Would you please join us next week? For more on this, uh, the room of forgiveness. We need to talk about that some more next week. There are some other things that I want to share with you, especially about a time frame concerning forgiveness. We'll discuss that next week, a time frame for forgiveness. This is Apostle Whitlow saying thank you for joining us. Join us next week. I believe that God is going to bless you. I pray you have an incredible, incredible week. By the way, I've got some good news for some, some bad news for others. The bad news for somebody 
is that this is the last weekend that your president, the 45th, will be in office. The Woo-hoo! good news Woo-hoo! is this. Let me wait, wait, wait. You can't wait, 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 wait. A new president wait. and a new vice president, which means that we're going to see some changes based upon the will and promise of God. Now, remember this. Your marriage will be meaningless until your mate becomes meaningful. Wives, I've got two words for you. When he tap you on the shoulder, roll over. And if you're by yourself, go take a foot out. The next time, go with God, and he will, and he will go with you. Dabba dabba do. God bless. Shalom. Come on, Timmy Kim, hit that track. It's a place. 